Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of, wait for it, wait for it, Mr. H's Art Pot. You join me today, sat in the old jalopy, as I'm about to embark on an old-fashioned Mr. H bimble. I've not done one of these for a while, but today I managed to curve out a little bit of free time for myself. I haven't got little Toby in tow, so I'm going to be heading out towards a little place called Down Holland, which is not far away from the town of Farnborough, and it's not too far away from Southport. It's all around that coastal area. So we're going to be getting a little bit of sea air in our lungs today, Hot Potters. And I'm going to Down Holland today to try and seek out two relics from World War II. I'm going to be looking for two old pillboxes. Now, they're not the type of pillboxes that you would automatically think of. Normally, you would think of an hexagonal-shaped concrete room, which men used to go in, and there was a sort of defensive bunker, wasn't there? Well, they're not them type of pillboxes that we're going to be taking a look at today, because we're going to be making our way to the outskirts of what used to be Busker Airfield. And during the Second World War, there was special little bunkers placed around the airfield so that men could spot if the Luftwaffe was coming over. So we're going to be taking a look at these today, because they're a little bit rare. There's not many of them left. So, without further ado, let's do this, shall we? But first order of the day, fill the old jalopy up with some jip as we've got quite a drive ahead of us. Right, hot potters, let's get gone, eh? Well, hot potters, we've arrived, and as you can see, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. These fields that are in front of me, hot potters, they just stretch on for miles and miles. But back in the early 1940s, during the Second World War, where we are now stood would have been slap bang in between two airfields. RAF Woodvale, which is just outside of Southport, and HMS Ringtail, which used to be Busker Aerodrome. If ever you've been to Busker Car Boot in uh, recent years, that's where the aerodrome used to sit. But there are still one or two little relics in this area from the defence of the Second World War. And one of them is that curious little structure that you can probably just make out in the distance there in the centre of your screen. That little structure though, we'll be making our way towards it. And then there's another one of those just up that road there. So we'll be taking a look at both of them in this video. Now I've put long trousers on hot potters because I'm going to have to make my way through the fields. And I don't want any bitey things getting at my legs. So although it's a warm day, I've opted for long trousers today. So without further ado, let's make our way towards the first of these water arm structures, shall we? So, hot potters, we're now going to make our way to the first of these water arm structures. Now, today is a lovely day, as you can see in the background, but there is a little bit of sea air and a bit of a breeze. We are out in the open. Unfortunately, a little bit of wind may get captured on this film in places. That can't be helped, it's just one of those things. Now, the purpose of these little structures was mainly to allow personnel to stand in them and search the skies for enemy aircraft. Obviously, what uh, Nazi Germany was trying to do at the time was destroy our air defences. So they would place little bunkers in fields such as I'm now walking through and the idea was that they would be able to give the air stations a bit of an heads up that um, enemy aircraft was coming. And hopefully our boys could get up into the air and uh, they stood a better chance, rather than trying to defend themselves being on the ground. Now, the idea was to try and destroy our air defences by strafing them. And these bunkers were designed in a specific way to try and stop that and uh, offer the personnel manning them a little bit of protection, as, you, as we'll see when we get closer to them. I'm having to make my way along the edge of a farmer's field here, that's why I'm sort of bobbing up and down. I've, uh, I've not got a limp or anything like that, as uh, my very good friend Mike once commented on, it always seems as though I've got a limp in these videos, but uh, that's not the case, it's just that the ground is a little bit bumpy. So I'm now making my way over to this structure. The vehicle just gone past there. I don't know if that's the farmer who owns this field. We'll soon find out. But there it is in front of me. And it's amazing to think that these things have survived because they're not as well built 
from what I've seen online as the um, hexagonal pearl boxes. It's basically just four walls with a roof placed on top and that's why they're known as a bus stop or bus shelter type of pillbox. But they are rare because they're only placed where there was airfields. So uh, we're now approaching this and we should be able to see inside. They don't look very big. So I don't know if it would have just been one person in there or a couple. I should imagine they would have then been in contact with whatever air station it served via radio. But here we are now. And the idea of that big overhang on it was so that the enemy planes couldn't straff it from overhead. So, rather clever really. And here we are at Potters. Da 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 da. I'll now whip the camera around and we'll get inside this. And there we are at Potters. This is in beautiful condition to say as it dates from around 1943. Other than that little bit of soil that's on the top there that's blown up there over the years, this is as it was when it was placed here around 1943, I believe. Bit of a blast wall though, just as you step in. And then as you get in here, you can see the view that they would have had here of the skies. And like I said, that overhang wasn't to protect them from the rain, it was so the enemy aircraft from above couldn't strafe those who was in here. And look at that up, Potters, not a little bit of graffiti on any of these walls. That's amazing. But I just put that down to the location of these bunkers being in the middle of nowhere. And this is the other side of that blast wall. Now I've no idea what would have been in this square here. Whether or not they just was trying to save on concrete so they didn't bother pouring that in. Or whether there was something mounted here at one time or not, who knows. And there's the road that I've drove the old jalopy on, just at the end of that field there and that crop. Amazing. Obviously it's just a big thick concrete roof placed on top of four concrete pillars. And they don't look very big from the inside. So I should imagine there was only about two people in here at most back in the day. Right then I'm going to make my way out of here now. Head back up that crop field though, and get back onto the road. And we're going to take a look at the second of these bunkers and see if it's in just as good a condition or if that's not seen the ravages of time as well. Right, join me in a moment when I'm back on the road. So what Potters, we've made it back to the road. And I'm now going to make my way down to the second one of these bunkers which is, isn't too far down this road. Now unfortunately I've left my sunglasses at home, so I'm having to squint into the camera a little bit. You know, I've been all good what I know if, uh, if the old night of the sun, as they used to say back in the Second World War, came. You know, 10 ME 109 straight out at sun, that's it, I'd be gone. Daka, 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 daka. Have you ever seen the uh, film, one of the war films? I think it's in the Battle of Britain, that's how they used to train them with that noise. Daka, 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 daka. But it's a lovely day today, and to be honest, this is a part of Formby, etc. I've never come down. I used to do cycling back in the day, Hot Potters, before I got knocked off. I've been, I've been out one day, I'll tell you this story while I've got a little bit of time. I'd been out to uh, Clitheroe, 
and, and that way out when I was about 18, cycled all the way up there. And I'd been out, had a lovely day, and as I came back home to my hometown of Wigan, just near the bleach works there, or the old bleach works, there's a roundabout and uh, there was a park van, I pulled round the van and somebody was coming round the roundabout and apparently they knocked me off my bike. I don't remember anything about it. And the next thing I knew, I was waking up in hospital. And it was lucky really, as luck would have it. The old noggin hit the vehicle rather than hitting the curb on the other side. Otherwise, boom, I'd have known nothing about it. Still, if you're going to go out, that's probably the best way to go out, not knowing anything about it. Anyway, back to today's video. And as I say, it's a lovely day here. Just look at this view, just look at this view. There's the bunker we've just been in. And if you were going to get stationed, stagging on as they call it, you couldn't have a really worse place, could you? Yeah, unfortunately, I've not been able to make the videos as much. I've had little Toby James for a solid fortnight. Me and laws who provide a little bit of childcare, have come down with COVID, managed to get through the pandemic. And now, they've come down with it, so first of all, my mother-in-law, she come down with it, and father-in-law seemed to escape it. Then as she started coming round a little bit, my father-in-law went down with it, so they've not been able to have Toby. Hence, I've not been able to make any videos. But today, I've managed to carve out a little bit of free time for myself, thanks to Mrs H, and I decided to come here and do this video yeah an old-fashioned mr h bimble it's good to be back hot potters to be honest hopefully as little toby starts nursery we're going to try him again i'll be able to get out a little bit more with you as i have missed doing this to be honest but family comes first family comes first hot potters I can't believe how quiet it is on these roads. Other than farm traffic, there's nothing. Yeah, I like my, my World War II stuff. And there's quite a bit of it around here. I even know where there's a queue station. Which, uh, there were decoy stations back during the Second World War. Again, because RAF Woodvale is just up the road there, and HMS Ringtail, which, that's what it was called. It, HMS sort of springs up the mounds of a ship, doesn't it? But it belonged to the Royal Navy, the uh, field in Busca, and it was so that they could train and get pilots to land on aircraft carriers. That's where they were stationed. So uh, that's why it's named HMS Ringtail. And I think, as I was coming in, I spotted a memorial to the brave men and women who served at that station. So we'll close this video taking a look at that memorial, I think, because it would be rather fitting. But um, going back to the decoy station, what they used to do with those was you would get two personnel that would sit there, and if they heard enemy aircraft coming over, they'd switch on a lamp and they try and fool the enemy aircraft into believing that they was over the airfield and that they'd seen a plane taxiing down the runway. Now, the thing is, if they're as successful in fooling those enemy aircraft, it was basically a suicide mission, wasn't it? Because if they dropped bombs on the decoy station, the personnel manning it would have just been destroyed but it's really interesting and if you don't know what one is go and look one up online because it was so simple how they used to operate but that's for another video but i will try and get to that one because it is over this way and there's lots of little relics around here with the being earth stations and things and uh old car just up the road there but we're now approaching this second little bunker and that's what we're going to be taking a look at 
in today's video and I'll just swing the camera around there it is so join me in a while when I've managed to make my way through all these brambles and everything to get to it because this one looks a little bit more overgrown hot potters and there it is hot potters it does loop like there's been a little path made through here so I'm not the first to visit this recently but it is a little overgrown so we'll just have to carefully make our way through also I don't like stepping on a farmer's crops but here we are and this one looks to be just in as good a condition that's the other one that we've visited. Although, no, the corner's been took off there. But it does allow you to see the sort of reinforcing that's inside the roof of these structures. And the blast wall's been knocked over there on this one. So it's just an open space, really. Looks like I've uh, disturbed a bee there. Thought for a moment though there was enemy aircraft hot potters. And once again you can see that the graffiti artists haven't made it here. These walls are pristine. Both on the outside and on the inside. Although, on the ceiling here, someone has painted the letters ALA. Don't know if that's original to when this was a wartime structure. I shouldn't imagine it is. And I've no idea what ALA stands for. But just look at those stunning views. If you'd imagine in winter, it was a different picture and it would have been rather bleak. But these would have made excellent bird ads today, wouldn't they? And do we have some enemy aircraft there, Hot Potters? Yeah, up there. Making the way over is a plane just to add to the ambience. But yeah, going back to modern day use of these they are very cool these inside and I don't just mean the cool in the they look good you know today's a rather warm day but the wind's blowing through these and uh, it's rather pleasant inside right up potters I've uh, brought along with me a pair of binoculars or binos as they know in the, in the trade and I'll demonstrate how these would have been manned back in the day for you now and for the purposes of this demonstration at Potters I've raided Toby's toy box and brought along a pair of binoculars to demonstrate to you how the personnel manning these posts would have manned them during the Second World War and what they would have done they would have simply been searching the skies through the binoculars or binos as I'm doing now looking for any incoming aircraft. Probably the sound would have given away that it was approaching. But this is what they would have done. Just searching the skies, looking for enemy aircraft. Well, Hot Potters, I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration of how these bunkers used to be manned during the Second World War. But I'm going to head off back to the old jalopy now, I think. I made my way back to where HMS Ringtail used to stand. And hopefully I'll be able to find that memorial again to the brave men and women who manned HMS Ringtail during the Second World War for you. So join me in a little while once I've found this memorial. Well, Hot Potters, welcome back. I've made it. Now, uh, I've been driving round and round here uh, trying to find this memorial. But for anyone who wants to come here, I'll make it easier for you. It's right at the side of this booths here. 
in Berska. Anyway, we'll now make our way over to this memorial because all you need to do is park on the car park like I've done. You get three hours and you can just walk over to where this memorial is. So let's do that, shall we? And here it is, folks. Let's get a closer look at it. And it's right at the side of the road, you can't miss it as you come in. It was just a case of getting into it. You just look for the booth sign though, you'll find it. Then we've got the dedication stone, which is over here. And you can see the HMS ringtail emblem though. And it states, in commemoration of the Royal Navy personnel, who served at HMS Ringtail, Royal Naval Air Station, Burska, which was operational on this site between the 1st of September 1943 and the 15th of June 1946. For radar training and as a base for squadrons, disembarked or working up for a shipboard operations during World War II, supported and funded by Burska Parish Council. And I think this was unveiled in 2014, but don't quote me on that. And it's a fantastic little memorial to the men and women who served at this station. I think after the war, they held on to it till about 1957 and then finally sold the land off. Right then, I'm going to whip the camera around and I'll wrap this video up, I think. Right, folks, well, that'll just about do it for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's little video, taking a look at those spotter bunkers over there in Down Holland area of Farm Best Stroke Southport and taking a look at this memorial here at the former Burska Herodrome known as HMS Ringtail back in the day. So all that's left for me to say Hot Potters is until the next time from myself Mr H it is bye bye for now. Dug -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug -a -dug -a